What's Woo! up? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope you have a nice uh, day today. And uh, I really am glad that uh, we got our workout in. That's right. It's all about consistency. So really? today's, yes. Are you sure? Well, I wrote it. So I, I think I'm sure. Wow. Tell me about it then. <laughs> well, you know, some people can do something, stay committed for a week. Some people can stay committed for a month, a quarter, a year. Some people can even stay committed for five years. A winner stays committed however long it takes to achieve the result they desire that's called consistency that's true well You're so smart thank you or well, as my brother would say you are a genius oh richard jr that's right <laughs> i'll take that as a vote of confidence so today i wanted to uh share with you the ultimate standard of excellence my granddaddy said to me years ago Paul, every day, every time, without fail, no exceptions. There's no margin for error in that approach. Do it every day, mm -hmm. every time, without fail, no exceptions. It beats doing it every other day. Right. It beats doing it every other week you fall victim to the should mentality. I should, I should, I should, I should tell you should all over yourself. Say hi to our friends. Well, I was just doing that kind of. Well, well, hello everyone. I was putting up your comments. We got Susan on, Michelle, Brad. Hey now. Salute Lisa, Michelle, Boom. Whoop, whoop. Michelle in the house, Butch, Janice and yes. John. Let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to butcher your name. I'm so sorry. N uh, Nachama, you should message me how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm she horrible. She does a good job better than me. But good morning. But good morning. And Jerry, All the blessings to Jerry, you. Jerry, Jerry Wall, wearing Lynn. your high heels. Lynn and Jenny. Good morning, Jenny. Yes. And Carolyn, good morning, yes. Virginia, wow. Jennifer, whoop, whoop, Lisa, Lisa Brown, how you doing? And Jana, awesome. You guys are awesome. Glad you guys could be on here. So today, when you think about that every day, every time, without fail, no exceptions, we um, have adopted a routine around here so we can get our day started in a good way. So today I just want to share a little bit about Laura's routine. Tell me how you started your day. Well, got up at 4.30, meaning feet on the floor at 4.30. So if mm. I wanted to spend a little bit more time, like press a snooze button, which I like to do, I'm guilty of it. Then I made it for 4.15. So then my feet could hit the floor at 4.30. And then um, got up, made some coffee, which is very important because Laura's brain does not function very well. I mean, it can, it's just not as well. I can attest to that. But. And then what I like to do is then I like to take some time for prayer. And then I like to write something, just letting it out, not even worrying about what it sounds like, what it looks like, how it may sound to other people. I just write just to write whatever comes from my brain gets on the paper. And I think that's a great exercise to do to one, warm up your brain for the day, but to also come up with some pretty crazy stuff because I don't know about you guys, but my brain is just like, oh, I wrote that this morning. Oh, wow. Cause I was half asleep. Half so late. we're going to share what she wrote because I was impressed. I like to take a single word, a single word and write about that. I do that in the morning. So she wrote this this morning. I'm going to have her read it to you. So settle up reading time <laughs> long ago in a galaxy far away. Laura wrote this. 
don't make it weird. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, and I actually followed because uh, I actually was inspired by Paul when he said he takes one word and he just writes and writes and writes on that one word. And I think that's pretty genius. So I chose a word today and I chose belief because I love that word. So here we go. It's just a page in a little bit. Okay. Uh, a trust and a knowing of what has yet to be. It is a warmth. It is a warmth gifted by peace, folding and weaving into your hand to remind you that you are not alone. But it's important to understand. It's not enough to just believe, for it is truly about what you believe or what you choose to believe. What is going to drive your confidence? What thoughts are going to drive your life's mission? What brings you joy, makes you laugh, or brings a smile to your face? Belief soothes the parts of you that want to hold you under. It's a calming of the chaos in your mind. Everything we do in life leading to our success starts with the idea that it's possible. If we didn't believe it was possible, then what would be the point in trying? It's our negative thoughts about what we are capable of that poisons our potential dreams and puts limits to our abilities. Believe that you can and the rest is certain. Believe that the pain you feel at times is not there to destroy you, but to strengthen you. Believe that each new day you will grow and learn that you will discover and utilize the tools to better yourself. Hold on. Belief is the change in mindset from uncertainty to certain, mm. from unknowing to confident and clear, from a set a settled life to a life with endless possibilities. Mm. What we believe can either be our greatest gift or the very chains that keep us imprisoned, chained and caged to what is only fact. Wow. The colors found in belief are also found in the most vibrant paintings. Wow. I love that. So I just wanted to share that with you. She wrote that this morning, very early. And I think the mind works at his highest RPM early in the day. Mm -hmm. Have you ever got up and heard a song that you couldn't get it out of your mind all day long? Oh, um, exactly. Like when I was growing up, they had this song on TV. My mom uh, played music. My dad played the TV and I walked out there. I wish I was a Nostra Meyer wiener. That's <laughs> what I really like to be. I didn't want to be a Nostra Meyer wiener, but I sang that all day long. That wasn't the... <laughs> Sorry. What are you laughing about? I used to sing that song all the time. <laughs> I would be sweet. <laughs> Sing it. Everyone would be in love with me. <laughs> oh, wow. So anyway, oh, it's so funny. Hey, oh. Janice, how you doing? How's John? Hey, Melissa. And hey, Michelle, Renee, how's you going? So today I went out and walked in a park and sat down by myself and practiced my affirmations and always ending with my creed. Mm -hmm. And this was the creed that I wrote on 414, 1978, my 21st birthday. And I wanted to learn this so bad when I had my stroke, when I was left speechless, I said it in my mind, but I screwed it up all the time. A piece there and a piece there. And my speech teacher, Christine said, I have a recording of me doing this the first time. Unintelligible, unintelligible. You couldn't make out a word. Now look at you. So I don't know, but this, is important to me. So what is important to you when you have aphasia is what you should be working on. It will inspire you. It will bring your passion up, your enthusiasm up. So I'm going to share it slowly, but I'm going to share it. I hereby promise to begin today to manifest the personal greatness I know lies within me, 
to improve the quality of my life, to learn more, laugh more, care more, share more, and risk more. I control my personal destiny and I recognize if it is to be, it is up to me. This is the day in my life that I summon the courage to face my fears and turn them into the stepping stones of success. I will be the prisoner of nothing. I am someone special. I will live my life at level 10 every day, every time without fail, no exceptions. That's my creed. I live by this and I wanted it back. Mm -hmm. I practice for hours and hours and hours. That consistency gave me back my creed, gave me back what I wanted to say to everyone. I wanted to learn my creed. And I was relentless in my approach. Consistency was my fuel mm -hmm. that I needed. So I practiced it when we practiced it yesterday. Funny voice, loud, soft, funny voice, sing. So I just applied that approach consistently till I learned this. So whatever you do in life, you have to apply consistency every day. It's not enough to be consistent, consistent every once in a while. You know, um, if you consistent, sometimes it doesn't produce a good result. Mm -hmm. Share with me how you use consistency to develop so much um, level of fitness. You, you know, you know, every exercise known to man, I, I can prove it because I'm, I'm sore. I, I have to. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> for anybody watching the live last night when he um, said he wasn't going to be sore today. Well, hmm. I proved him right. And I love that feeling. Yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I was sore, but uh, I got up and did it again. So what did you develop? How did you get that mindset? I understand from your mom, mm -hmm. Abby, that you used to do 2,000 push-ups a day. Sit no, sit-ups yes. a day. 2,000 sit-ups a day. How do you get that mindset for being so consistent? Well, first off, I don't want to uh, pat myself on the back necessarily for that because that was when I had an eating disorder. Oh, well, I didn't so know that. that was what fueled that aspect of the 2000 sit ups. That was actually very unhealthy. You ruined I don't, a very good story. I don't recommend doing that. So <laughs> I just want to be clear okay. just in case we have fitness people on here and they're like, girl, what are you doing? So um, I think as far as the consistency in that, you have to find something that you are passionate about. So yep. something that really draws your interest. So for instance, I do photography, videography. I, I love life coaching. And so those things really draw my attention. I love to learn more about it. I love to just practice doing it all the time. And so, yeah. so with that, I, I have the consistency because it brings me joy doing it. Ah. But if it's something, so for instance, fitness, right? Like where we feel good after, but necessarily going there first or just before you leave, you don't want to go. Or there are lots of times where I don't want to go. And it's until I get to the gym or I get to my destination where I'm like, okay, I feel a little bit better. That I think takes discipline yes. in your consistency. So there's passion, which could be the fuel for consistency. But then if it's something that you know is good for you, that's going to bring you closer to your goal, but doesn't really give you that excitement feeling to go do, then that's where discipline has to kind of make its way in there or else the consistency will drop and your goals will drop. And you may be waiting years and years and years for something that could have taken you maybe a week or a month or two. 
You know, um, that's really good. But I want, if you don't mind, I want to apply this to aphasia. Mm -hmm. We need to do more about aphasia. I agree. Uh, there's not enough insurance to pay for learning how to talk again. And I just want to, anytime I do this show, we we want to make it light and fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. Oh, but I, one. I want to bring it. Aphasia is uh, a business that is um, creates all kinds of peril, depression, sadness, all these things. When you have aphasia, you have to fight and mm -hmm. fight and fight again. You have to be your own speech advocate. You have to stand up for what's right for you. So I just want to, anything that you can do to bring awareness to aphasia, share this content, please. Mm -hmm. Share this content. If somebody listened to one word of this and it helps them, it's enough for me. It's enough for Laura. We want to bring a light show, a funny show, share good stories, share a, a, somewhat a wisdom that we may have acquired along the way. But listen, aphasia needs awareness. It needs to be brought to everybody's attention. More people have aphasia than have Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy combined. Combined. It's crazy. And nobody knows what it is. We need to shout from the mountaintop, we have aphasia. We're victors over aphasia, not victims. Victors over aphasia. Recovery is possible to quote Brooke Allen. Life is a gift. Make it count to count, uh, quote Jerry Wald. 90% of, uh, of showing up, you know, to quote salute, just have to show up and do the work. But I hope you enjoyed this show. Please share it and uh, with your friends. And um, as we always say, I hate to leave this show because um, it was a good show. And I, <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. But as we always say, you are someone special because you are. You were destined to be great. Yes. God doesn't sponsor any flops or flip flops. He. <laughs> <laughs> she has that line really down. <laughs> you were put here, designed for maximum accomplishment from birth. Yes. Go be great because you can. And nothing is impossible, guys. Nothing. We can do anything we set our minds to if we just believe and Look up for your answers and remember. Hope is on. You guys say it with me. Hope. 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 <laughs> well, I was time. so impressed. Hope. I was so ready. Okay. Hope. <laughs> All right. One, One, two, two, three. Hope, hope is on, on the way. way. <laughs> Have good a good job. day. A blessed day. <laughs> well, oh, oh, by the way, tune in for Jerry's show. Susan and Brad LeMay, I wasn't invited, but Susan and Brad LeMay are going to be on the show talking all things about aphasia. It's going to be a great show. I can't wait. I will be training that time, so I have to watch the replay. Have a nice day. All Bless. right, guys. Bye. Bye. God bless you.